Hey, yo. Hey, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Scam Alert. If you're new here, I make all different kinds of videos with regards to scams, whether it's scam baiting videos where I try to waste as much of a scammer's time as possible while making it entertaining for you. I make educational videos as well where I try to show you how different kinds of scams work and what you can do to avoid them. And last but not least, I make parody videos. Sometimes I'll do skits and sometimes I'll make rap songs about some of my favorite scam baiters. So if you're new here and you enjoy the information that I'm sharing, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you like the video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button, have a thumbs up party. And last but not least, please make sure that you share this with at least one friend or family member to make sure that they don't get scammed. I've got a lot of good things to go over today. It's good news, guys. I'm really excited about it. So let's just do this. The first story we're going to talk about, guys, comes out of Georgia. Eight people were sentenced to jail and also to make restitution for their involvement in the IRS scam and payday loan scams. Let's dive right into the article. Eight defendants have been sentenced for their roles in an Indian-based call center fraud scheme that victimized thousands in the United States, resulting in over $3.7 million in losses. The sentences ranged from six months to four years and nine months in prison. IRS and payday loan phone schemes seek to profit by exploiting United States citizens, including the elderly and most vulnerable members of our community, said U.S. Attorney B.J. Pack. As this case shows, we will prosecute companies and individuals in India and in this country who choose to steal from vulnerable victims. Victimizing taxpayers by impersonating Internal Revenue Service employees is a serious crime, said J. Russell George, the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. TIGTA will do everything within its power to ensure that those involved in the impersonation of IRS employees are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. These significant sentences should serve as notice to those who engage in this type of criminal activity that they will be held accountable. According to U.S. Attorney Pack, the charges, and other information presented in court, these defendants were involved in a sophisticated scheme organized by co-conspirators in India, including a network of call centers in Ahmedabad, India. Using information obtained from data brokers and other sources, call center operators called potential victims while impersonating officials from the Internal Revenue Service or individuals offering fictitious payday loans. The call center operators would then threaten potential victims with arrest, imprisonment, or fines if they did not pay taxes or penalties to the government. If the victims agreed to pay, the call centers would immediately turn to a network of U.S.-based co-conspirators to liquidate and launder the extorted funds by purchasing prepaid debit cards or through wire transfers, including through MoneyGram and Western Union, to the attention of fictitious names and U.S.-based defendants and their co-conspirators. Eight defendants have been sentenced as part of this case. U.S. District Judge Michael L. Brown sentenced the following individuals. Mohammed Kazim Momim, 33 years old of Norcross, Georgia, was sentenced to four years and nine months in prison to be followed by three years of supervised release. The amount of restitution will be determined at a later hearing. Rodrigo Leon Castillo, 46, of Katy, Texas, was sentenced to four years and three months in prison to be followed by three years of supervised release and ordered to pay $833,938.20 in restitution. That's awesome. Momed Zozab Momem, 23, of Lawrenceville, Georgia, was sentenced to two years and six months in prison to be followed by three years of supervised release. The amount of restitution will be determined at a later hearing. Drew Kyle Riggins, 24, of Stone Mountain, Georgia, was sentenced to one year, one month in prison, three years of supervised release, and ordered to pay $49,640.36 in restitution. Nicholas Alexander Dean, 26, of Tucker, Georgia, was sentenced to one year and one day in prison, three years of supervised release, and ordered to pay $49,640.36 in restitution as well. Palak Kumar Patel, 30, of Clarkston, Georgia, was sentenced to 10 months in prison, three years of supervised release, and ordered to pay $19,142.60 in restitution. Jance Parrish Miller, 25 years old, of Stone Mountain, Georgia, was sentenced to 8 months in prison, 
three years of supervised release and ordered to pay $49,640.36 in restitution. And Devin Bradford Pope, 25, of Chambly, Georgia, was sentenced to six months in prison, three years of supervised release, and ordered to pay $49,640.36 in restitution. These eight defendants were charged along with five Indian call centers and seven Indian nationals in a 27-count indictment with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. The government is seeking extradition of Indian nationals. Now at first, I didn't want to say who these people were just because I don't want them to have more clout, but it's important, I guess, that we know who these people were. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Georgia is part of the Department of Justice Transnational Elder Fraud Strike Force. The strike force focuses on investigating and prosecuting defendants associated with form-based fraud schemes that disproportionately affect American seniors. These include romance scams, phone scams, mass mailing fraud schemes, and tech support fraud schemes. One guy has to pay almost a million dollars in restitution, guy. That's a step in the right direction. You know what? This new strike force that was developed by the Department of Justice looks to be a very, very positive thing. And I'm hoping that somehow, some way, scam baiters can work together with the Department of Justice to help bring more of these guys down and bring more justice to the American people and hopefully to the Canadian people and anybody who's getting defrauded out there. I truly, truly hope that a lot of these victims get some form of restitution. Why? Why don't you pick up? Stupid scammers, pick up the phone when I call. Stupid, 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 stupid. Dude, calm down, man. You're being like super crazy right now. I know, I'm not, I'm not being myself, I'm Here. sorry. Have some 11. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. Feel much better? Like myself, man. Thanks so much. You're welcome. This next story, guys, deals with the FTC shutting down hundreds of websites that were promising quick and easy government services. You know, like going down to the DMV where hope goes to die. A lot of us, I know we hate going down to the DMV, but guess what? Scammers have found a way to infiltrate even those things. Let's take a look at this article. Hundreds of websites promising quick and easy government services such as driver's license renewals and approvals for public benefits have been shut down after an investigation by the Federal Trade Commission. More than 200 websites used in the operation include several with official sounding names like dmv.com, floridadriverslicense.org, licenseguides.org, and registrationtags.com. The names are familiar to many people because the sites were programmed to show up high in web searches. Six individuals and 52 companies based out of a single address in Miami are named as defendants in a complaint filed by the FTC in U.S. District Court in Miami. The complaint accuses the defendants of violating federal laws barring unfair or deceptive acts of commerce. The FTC, in a news release, said the operators made millions of dollars by selling people's personal information. The most popular site, DMV.com, promised links to renew your license, renew car registration, and similar services, the complaint states. But the sites performed none of those services, the FTC said, and instead took consumers' money and delivered guides with publicly available tips about how to obtain driver's licenses. The website fell into broad categories, including vehicle-related transactions such as offering driver license and car registration services. Some offered hunting and fishing licenses. Another category offered to determine eligibility for public benefits, including housing vouchers, food stamps, or Medicaid. According to the complaint, the websites within each category were nearly identical and designed to appear high in search engine results when users type such queries as Section 8 Housing Apply renew Florida driver's license, and get fishing license. Consumers who provided their personal information to the sites were then targeted with emails and text messages from the defendants and third parties with offers including job search assistance, free gift cards, and home buyer grants, the complaint states. Individual defendants listed in the complaint are co-owners Burton Katz, Brent Levison, Robert Zangrilo, and Alicia Rothman, plus Arlene Mahan, 
and Christopher Sherman, officers of several of the defendant companies. All are South Florida residents, but the complaint does not list their addresses. Katz is identified as the founder, owner, and CEO of On Point Global and mastermind of the operation. He has personally received more than 2.5 million in distributions and salary from the operation since 2016, according to the FTC's complaint. The six individual defendants are signatories on dozens of the operation's bank accounts and points of contact for many of its mail drops and merchant accounts, the complaint states. In granting the FTC's request for temporary injunction halting the site's operations as litigation against the company proceeds, U.S. District Judge Robert N. Scola found the FTC is likely to prove that the sites deceived consumers by misrepresenting the services they offer, thus inducing consumers to pay money or divulge personal information under false pretenses. Disclosures on the sites revealed that they were selling guides that could be obtained for free elsewhere on government sites, but those disclosures were presented in fonts that were small and faintly colored compared to links and language in larger, more colorful font that directed them to the service they were seeking, such as renewing a driver's license, the judge wrote. Receiver Melanie Damien has been appointed to take control of the company's and its financial accounts to preserve evidence and determine the value of remaining assets. Isn't that crazy, guys? Having access to something for free, these people are charging you for it. It's crazy, man. Anyways, with that being said, guys, let's get into this week's episode of Quickbait. On Monday, we had Pleasant Green drop a brand new video with a very interesting set of circumstances for what he at first thought was a scam message. Luke's Doghouse had a fantastic live stream, so make sure you check it out. Wenja put out a new video as well with a scammer that was just too dang busy to go to church. IRL Rosie did a live stream on Monday evening, and Modder Paul Hookers did a live stream too. Modder will usually split his live streams up, so make sure you check them out. The Bashful Scambaiter put out a wonderful video titled Battle of the Call Center Scammers, and it was great. IRS IREX Scammers dropped the pilot episode for the IREX Scammers show. Scammer Revolts also put out a new video, and Rise Against Scammers dropped a new video as well. On Tuesday, we had a few live streams going, which were all awesome. We had Skeleton Siski with a live stream, Ishmael Ali had a live stream as well, and so did the boys over at Trilogy Media who had a special guest with them in IRL Rosie. Music is a Rainbow dropped a new video as well, where she turns herself into the SSA scammers. Luke's Doghouse dropped two videos on Tuesday. In one, a scammer recognized him for 11 when he had done his live stream, and in the other, he pretends to be an old man with dementia, and the scammers still try to scam him. Arya Philnet put out a video where she gifts her money to the fake SSA. Kiboga also put out a new video where the scammers fall apart when they call Kiboga's fake bank. Carol Slamming Scamming had a hilarious live stream with her son Scott. Anonymous Freedom posted a video as well. Wednesday brought us a ton more from different scam baiters. Carl Rock took us on a journey through where the Beatles learned to meditate as he explains how gem scammers in India target foreigners with their fake gems. Scammer Payback posted a video as well, and so did the Trilogy Media Boys with IRL Rosie. And Drewy did a live stream as well. On Thursday, we had Mr. Scambait with a hilarious live stream, so make sure you subscribe to Mr. so you can be punished. A logical dropped part one of a two-part series dealing with Amazon scammers. The one guy had Jiro Clue about how to say zero, literally Jiro Clue. Karen Bates scammers had a premiere as well from one of her live streams. Make sure you check that out. Pleasant Green brought us another part of his series. We got a brand new video from Kiboga where he makes a scammer repeat himself for 40 minutes. Where he makes a scammer repeat himself for 40 minutes. Where he makes a scammer... Well, you get the idea. Professor Scambader brought us a video about the SSA scammers wanting to arrest a hillbilly. Friday brought us the conclusion to Illogical's Amazon scam video where the guy still had Jiro Clue. Little Peace brought us a lovely video asking scammers what they wanted for Valentine's Day. She loves to spread love and peace. G-Man Scam Patrol brought us a live stream as well, as he normally does every Friday. Alan Green also had a brand new video where he scam baits some SSA scammers, and the Trilogy Media Boys went on an 8-hour live stream. Dr. Fell also brought us a brand new video.
and Skelton Siski brought us another live stream. On Saturday, Ishmael Ali, Cynthia, UFO Pilot, and Scambate Central all brought us awesome and hilarious live streams. And Kiboga dropped another video as well. Now, let's check out this week's Do One Thing, Do One Thing with Alan Green. Sorry? I think the resolver outside the courthouse. Okay, um, see, so yes, you know, as I told you, uh, this is the, uh, there is a miscalculation error of 4,200. Excuse me. So as I told you, uh, there is a miscalculation error of $4,296, including the tax penalties and the interest based on the wax. So, uh, so you have to pay this uh, entire amount which you owe it to the IRS. Right? And not only that, okay. once you pay the money, uh, our IRS head officer will work on your case. Right now, he's only the authorized person to resolve this case. Okay. So, uh, to resolve this case, that I told you, you have to pay the money. So, are you able to, are you going to pay the entire amount to the IRS, which you owe it to the IRS from that since few years? Yeah, I'll pay the whole amount. Okay, do one thing, do one thing. And that's going to wrap up episode number five of Scam Alert. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, like I said, and you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Last but not least, make sure you have that thumbs up party and make sure you click that like button. And like I said before, please make sure that you share this information with your friends and your family members so that they do not get scammed. Last but not least, guys, the scam baiters that I, I featured here today, please make sure that you check the description. I'm including links to all their channels as well as Alan Green, who I featured today on the channel. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.